Good morning. Good morning. It's a bright, beautiful, glorious morning. So uh, I didn't have a chance to go out and check my garden this morning. That's a little disappointing to me, but as soon as lunch comes, I'll go and see if anything happened overnight. <laughs> it's one of my things. This is an exciting moment for the college and an exciting morning to have uh, almost 80 HR professionals in the room to learn about our Pathways program uh, really begins to connect those dots for us between preparing people for the world of work, preparing people that, that have been absent in many ways from the world of work for a long time but have stepped up to say, I'm ready to join mainstream society. I'm ready to take care of myself and my family. Uh, the greatest carrot that we can give to that person is to know there's an opportunity for that job when they finish the hard work of this training program. Um, I am so proud of the work that Julie Parks and her staff are doing in this area. Um, I'm not sure how much has been shared jumping from one room to the other, uh, but the fact that we are one of five programs across the country that have been selected by the Department of Labor as a demonstration project says a lot about the quality of the work that this program uh, is producing. So it's, I only have a couple of jobs this morning. One is to welcome you and to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. Uh, but two is to introduce uh, a really a great friend and someone who I think is a great mayor, George Hartwell. Um, I, I've never met a person more committed to his city and more committed to the whole notion of sustainability. And, and in fact, this whole program is about sustainability, the sustainability of human resources in our community. Um, George has been wrapped around that issue uh, for many, many years. Uh, he's been a great friend and, and in some ways mentor to me as I've come in new to town. And so it's uh, my great pleasure to introduce a budding movie star. I don't know if you've seen <laughs> Lit up yet, uh, Mayor George Hartwell. George. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll keep the day job. <laughs> Good morning, welcome. Uh, I'm so glad to see this group of people. I just came from uh, next door where uh, where CEOs were gathered uh, uh, for this same conversation, and it's uh, it's an honor to take a couple of minutes of your time this morning before, uh, before we introduce the keynoter. Um, almost 20 years ago, a, uh, a, a far-sighted business leader, uh, uh, corporate CEO uh, and owner, um, uh, on the leading edge of the total quality management movement, gathered a group of, uh, of folks. Uh, I was privileged to be one of those. Uh, some were from, from industry and business, some were from the nonprofit sector, uh, some from, from government. Uh, there were about a dozen of us uh, uh, who, who spent uh, the better part of uh, two years together uh, at the feet of this guru, uh, learning about total quality management and what it meant and how we would how it could be uh, uh, practiced most effectively in our businesses, in our governmental units, in our, in our, in our nonprofit organizations. Uh, uh, and, and, and we were charged at each meeting with coming back uh, at the next meeting with, uh, with an illustration from our own business, uh, or in my case, from our governmental unit. Uh, I was a city commissioner in Grand Rapids at the time. Uh, how we had implemented uh, some element of uh, total quality management, how we'd learned from that, how we'd grown from that, what problems we'd had, what challenges we'd overcome uh, or hadn't overcome. And, and the group became a, uh, a support group, a, a learning uh, community during that period of time for about a year and a half. Uh, when I became mayor, uh, now almost eight years ago, um, I brought that body of knowledge with me, but, but stepped into a new environment uh, where sustainability was the, the catch word, um, uh, the, the new phrase, the new understanding. And, 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 and what then my, uh, my, my former uh, uh, guru uh, in uh, total quality management helped me understand is that sustainability is the natural evolution of uh, total quality management. Total quality management looked, of course, at the uh, 
the, the economic bottom line. And it said if you remove the waste from the production process, if you remove the waste from, from uh, your um, uh, uh, administrative processes, uh, you become leaner, you become, you become uh, more uh, cost effective, uh, and, and therefore you become more sustainable. Um, but, but then came uh, the sustainability movement that said it's not enough to look at the economic bottom line. You also have to focus on the environmental bottom line and on, and on your human capital, uh, your social capital, whether that's in a business, whether it's in a community. Uh, sustainability means that, uh, that, that you focus on, on that triple bottom line. And in city government, we came to understand that that means that you balance your focus across the elements of the triple bottom line. So, uh, it's, it's not enough simply to say we're a city that uh, is uh, um, uh, building a new economy that's focused on, on our own uh, processes and are becoming more economically uh, e efficient and, and, and using tax dollars more wisely. Uh, and, and it's because if, if you're also um, superintending the, the uh, demise of your, of your ecology, of your, of your natural environment, if you're watching your your beautiful river uh, turned to, to muck uh, in, in before your eyes. Uh, if you're if you're despoiling the, the the ground or the air or the water, you're not a sustainable city. And if you are economically prosperous and you're taking care of all your environmental concerns, but you're not paying attention to your people, uh, you're not bringing everybody along in the community that is that that's rising. Uh, then you can't ever be sustainable. Uh, and, and so in city government, we focused on, on, that, uh, on balancing that triple bottom line and looking not only at uh, economic prosperity and, uh, and, 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 and environmental uh, integrity, but also at bringing along all the people in our community. That's what this morning is all about. It's about that element of the triple bottom line. And you can't be a sustainable company, and you can't have a sustainable higher educational institution, and I can't have a sustainable city if we're not focused on the people uh, that make up that community, that make up that business, that make up that higher educational institution. So um, thanks for your commitment to uh, being here this morning, to, to, to listening, and, and beyond that, to implementing in your own practices, uh, human, human resources practices, uh, this uh, dimension of sustainability around uh, building people and building human capital. Oh, that guru that I that I uh, told you about that gathered uh, the the uh, the disciples around his feet uh, to uh, talk to us to teach us about uh, about uh, uh, total quality management and then to help us understand the link to sustainability. That was Fred Keller, uh, Fred Keller, Cascade Engineering Company. Uh, Fred, who's been a uh, uh, has been at the forefront of of this movement, has always been. Uh, a step or two ahead of, uh, of, of most of us uh, in, uh, in his understandings and in his practice uh, of sustainability. So it's my great pleasure to, uh, to introduce uh, uh, my guru and, and, and my friend and somebody that I suspect that most of you already know, uh, Fred Keller. Fred? He's good, isn't he? <laughs> Oh, thank you very much for being here this morning, and uh, I, I really enjoy uh, the uh, the thought process that George brings to this. It's it's. Uh, it's I don't I don't I didn't feel like a guru at all. I felt like we were mutually groping through the dark together, uh, because this has been a, a really interesting area and in thought process for us over the years. Can you hear me okay in the back? I all set. Um, I tend to want to walk around, so I, I'll I, I don't. I, Maybe I'll pick this thing up in a minute. But the, the idea that, that uh, we as a, as a community have, a, and, and as business people, have an opportunity to think differently about how we interact with the community as, as a business, and the idea that, that we could, in fact, uh, uh, make a difference in the lives of the people in the community uh, in a way other than just employing them, and in the, this kind of old-fashioned thought of, of employers do uh, the, the greatest amount of good because they uh, <coughs> are in fact uh, doing the uh, uh, the work of employing people and, and, and having an economic secure uh, future for their people. I th think that's a that's an interesting uh, uh, proposition, uh, but in my view, it's not sufficient. 
So I'm going to uh, walk you through here a couple of, uh, of, of slides. I'm going to use some, a few slides for, a, for illustration purposes, but you'll see some blank ones there just simply because I think I'll see some blank ones. How am I going to do this? How, what do I do, Klaus? Ah, there we go, okay. Uh, simply because uh, I don't want to have uh, a, a presentation where I'm kind of going off the, the script here. I, I want to be able to have you uh, uh, have some conversation with me personally and, and uh, think about this as opposed to looking at the screen all the time. But I want to have a, I've got five <coughs> assumptions that I'd like to um, kind of go over with you and have you have some understanding of uh, from my standpoint, my view. It's important, I think, that we think about um, how we engage the world, what we do. And it, what's also interesting for me is what West Michigan can do in this, in this area uh, of actually making an impact, positive impact from the uh, employer standpoint. I think it's working. Um, I, I, I think I got it working now. Uh, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> So, okay, good, thanks so much. Um, my first assumption is really important for us, I think, because it, it, it sets the stage for how we think about our world. The first assumption is that we, in fact, are facing a different kind of world today than we've ever faced any time in the history of humankind. Now that may sound like a simple assumption, but it does set the stage for how we think about solving our problems. Because it means that we're not going to solve our problems the same old way. We're not going to go back to something. <clears throat> and let me give you some examples. And many of you are familiar with this. Uh, this is a, a slide showing the employment drop that we had during our last recession. Obviously, the current recession, the last one is this red line. Every other recession, by the time we got out, uh, maybe 25, 30 weeks, we were on well on our way to recovery. We are not in this recession. We hear about some good things happening, but in fact, we have not recovered the number of jobs we lost by a long shot. We're probably down 7 million jobs. And when we add to the unemployment rate that we hear about all the time, the U3 number, which is around 8% at this point in time, maybe it's uh, actually 8.5%, maybe close to 9%. When we add to that the, un the underemployed and those who have stopped looking, the U6 number is right around, it's around 16% as of the end of April. May numbers will be coming out shortly. This is a very different world than we've ever had before in this country. We are facing, in fact, pretty different times. We are not facing a kind of reality that we've had in the past. We've had difficulties, things have come through, but we're facing things like offshoring in our manufacturing world. We now have, uh, I, I didn't include a slide here that shows the drop off in manufacturing in the United States. Sure, we're, we're experiencing a little rebound. How many of, our, are, of you are in manufacturing? Okay, so it's a, it's a good per percentage. We're feeling a little better, aren't we? But there's still, I just got back from Thailand. I was there for four, four days. The construction is unbelievable. The growth is incredible. They're paying their folks $10 a day. The safety regulations are not nearly what we face here in this country. We're not going to change that. That's not something that's going to turn around. We're not going to have a situation where we're going to have a world suddenly going to be where we were 20 years ago as, as the United States, leading the world. It's not going to happen. This is another reason. Oil is a good example. We're, we, I don't want to necessarily talk about whether or not we should have a carbon footprint reduction or if we should have cap and trade 
or if we should have any of these other political uh, solutions that people are talking about. The reality is we've got the price of oil. I like to show this longer term version of this. We're not going to go back to dollar a gallon oil, a, a dollar a gallon gas. We're not going to go back to uh, um, $50 a, a barrel oil or $30 a barrel oil. It's the, the, the trend is clear. That is not going to change. That's going to impact our world. That is a changing, that's impacting us in a way in which we haven't b uh, been able to understand. And for the manufacturers, this is another one. <clears throat> we used to think that we would just offshore those things that are low cost, the, 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 uh, the easy jobs, if you will. This one shows that on this chart, this is China's growth in terms of its uh, value-added market share of the computer and office machinery markets. The United States, we crossed about 2002. We're not going to have a, a, a return of the United States dominance in these areas. The idea of high-tech goods, China taking off and, and the United States we, this is, this is the, uh, the balance of trade for us. Our balance of trade is negative, theirs is positive. We're not going to change that relatively quickly. Things are happening in our world in which we are facing a real difference from the way we used to think about our country. And we're seeing emerging con con uh, companies, and, excuse me, emerging countries that are going to be more dominant than we are in markets. And we think about the manufacturing world, we're, we've lost not only our capacity, we're losing our capability. The machine tool industry in China is 10 times larger than the machine tool industry in the United States. It is not going to change at this point in time. It's not going to change for the foreseeable future. Here's one other one that's really rather discouraging. <coughs> this is a chart. I'll, I'll get to the good stuff later, OK? We're going to get the brutal facts first. But uh, here's a chart showing the, the educational attainment of a secondary education. And this, the, the uh, squares, the red squares, show all these countries, the red squares, are the education attainment of the 55 to 64 year olds, the old folks. Wow, kind of kind of old. <laughs> the, the triangles are the educational attainment of the 25 to 34 year olds and the percentage of folks who have achieved some sort of secondary credential, okay? All these countries are showing that the younger generation has achieved a lot more than their older generation. Oh, I forgot to mention the one with the blue circle, blue triangle. That's the United States. We have our 25 to 34 year olds are actually achieving less than the 55 to 64 year olds. Not a good thing. So my first assumption is that Structural changes have occurred. And we don't reverse structural changes. We don't reverse structural changes. We have to figure out a new way to solve our way through these kinds of problems. And the fact is that we have met our new reality. If we think we're going to go back, we're going to be disappointed. If we think we can achieve something that we haven't been able to, uh, uh, to attain because we just got to get back to something, we're going to be disappointed. That's my first assumption. 